Well, greetings and well met, strangers, and welcome to Banished, a new game I shall be let's playing on this channel, and one that a lot of people have been asking my opinion on. Banished is a game released by Shining Rock Software, and in a bit of a turn for the books for my channel, it's not in alpha, it's version 1, that means it has been released, and it was released very recently on the 18th of February. You can pick it up for about £14 or $20 US dollars on Steam, and probably one of the more interesting bit of information about this game is that it was designed by one person, just one. Now, I don't know if that includes the musical and art assets, but from what I've read, I think it does. And that is, well, quite honestly, staggering. It's truly, truly amazing that one person has managed to do this. Mind you, it's been um, a long time that he's been working on it, but it really shows. Even in the options menu, if we just look at this, look how many options there are on adjusting your game, making it run on your computer, uh, upgrading it, lo downgrading the, the graphics, things like that. I mean, there are quite a lot of games that are released by large development teams that don't have this level of customization. And that sort of polish is travels through the, the rest of the game. It, it, you see it everywhere. Now, Banished is, as you can probably tell from the background there, a city-building strategy game. And a member of a fairly small family, really, a fairly small genre, I should say. It used to be that there were lots of these sorts of games around, but there been fairly slim pickings of late. Now, as to the name, the Banished, you are kind of the omnipresent presence, much like in Dwarf Fortress and other games, that kind of guides the, the inhabitants. In this case, the inhabitants were banished from wherever they called home. For whatever reason, we don't know, perhaps some heinous crimes, or maybe they just got on the wrong side of a shady political figure. But for whatever reason, they have been exiled, and it is our job to help them build a new home, perhaps even a new life, maybe even a better life than the one they came from. Now, as with many games, you can have a randomly generated town name, but uh, I've decided that because of the nature of this game and the fact that it's uh, a little bit uh, defiant, we've been sent away, exiled from our homeland, and the population must fend for themselves, perhaps even grow stronger than they once were, I'm going to go for a, a little bit, uh, a name that's got a little bit of history in Wales, and that is going to be Harlech. This will be the town of Harlech, and if you wonder anything about Harlech, go ahead and Google it. Google has all of the answers these days. Now, there is a map seed, and if you happen to own this game and want to play along, then as long as you set these settings up the same way, I'm not sure if the town name really matters, but it might. As long as you have the same map seed, then you will have the same map as I do. Now, as for the uh, these other settings, you've got terrain type, which is valleys or mountains. And each has its pros and cons. Valleys tends to have more arable land, but less potential for mining. Mountains, the reverse. Of the two, I would say mountains is the harder one to settle in. And I believe there are achievements for actually living for a set period of years in a mountainous region that's got harsh environments, so on and so forth. But we're going to be going for valleys for this one. There are three map sizes, small, medium, and large, and large is very large. We will be going with that. It'll give us quite plenty of room to grow. But uh, one thing to understand about Banish is it tends to be a bit of a slower game. It does take time to build up, and any progress has to be measured against the additional strain it will put on your resources. So as a result, filling up a large map would take phenomenally long. It's much more likely that our, our budding uh, community is going to die. Much, much sooner than than we would actually fill out a large map. Probably from starvation, maybe from the elements, who knows. But they, they'll probably pass away long before we ever actually fill up a map. Now, as for climate, there are three choices. Mild, fair, and harsh. Harsh tends towards cold, and mild tends towards warm. Um, in this game, there are three main things that you need to provide for any of your settlers or, or colonists. That is food, shelter, and warmth. Warmth is especially important in colder seasons or colder climates. So harsh would put quite a, a strong um, 
emphasis on trying to get the the basics of survival set up whereas mild i believe t tends to have more disasters you you tend to have more fires breaking out and in a community where most of the buildings are made of wood that can be quite bad but we're going to be going for middle of the road with fair disasters are going to be on so there will be fires there will be random inclement weather um tornadoes and such and starting conditions now starting conditions doesn't change the underlying game mechanics it doesn't make the game harder in terms of satisfying the needs of your populace but it does give you a harder start by providing less resources and i'll go over the the differences but we will be playing on hard now with easy you start with six families now that might be um, uh, a wife a husband and some children or it could just be a wife and a husband or it could be a larger family with with several adults in it You'll start with uh, a decent amount of building materials and sundry um, finished goods like uh, tools and clothing and also food. But probably the, the biggest change here is you will have certain buildings already built. So there will be houses and a storage barn and also seeds. Now that is probably the biggest thing, seeds and livestock. Now on medium, it's pretty much easy, but everything is toned back a little bit. You don't have livestock and you don't have houses but you do have the storage barn you do have some seeds and you have a moderate amount of starting materials and then finally hard which we're going to be going for the hard game you will only have four families you'll have a small amount of of various starting resources there'll be no buildings built but that isn't necessarily that that hard of a, a thing to overcome that's just merely time really but the big thing is no seeds and no livestock Medium that only gets seeds and, and no livestock and easy gets both seeds and livestock and these are really really important because the only way to get these things is through trade. You can't just go out into the fields and forage some plants and end up with seeds to plant a field. It doesn't work like that in this game. To get like cabbages or potato seeds, you have to trade. You can't just find them. You do. You can get food from the forest in the fields, but it's it's not the sort that you can then turn into crops. And likewise, you can't just go out and find livestock by sticking them in a cage and taming taming them like you can in Dwarf Fortress. You have to trade for them. So whereas you can pretty much make a a self sufficient colony. With with easy and never have to trade you would be hard pressed to do the same thing on hard but it wouldn't be impossible now with all of that said we are going to start this up but before i do i will warn you that when i click ok it's going to take a, a minute or maybe two to generate a large map so i'm probably going to cut that out of the recording so i shall bring you back once the land has been generated i'll just give you a last moment to glimpse the settings in case you want to play along but that is it i shall see you when we have a new land to colonize Okay, welcome back. I've gone ahead and I've paused the recording here so that we can uh, actually take stock of our situation. It looks like we're right on the edge of a lake. That's actually pretty cool. I haven't seen that too often, or at least I haven't started on a lake too often. My lord, that river. Really? Where did that river go? Hmm. <laughs> that seems weird. But uh, let's have a quick look at the map then. And we bring that up there. And there are a few features that you should really pay attention to. It looks like we've got two lakes maybe joined together in here. That looks like a, an enormous lake, honestly. That's, a, that's much larger than usual. You'll see lakes, small rivers, and a medium river, as well as uh, mountains. But uh, generally, looking on this map for those isn't that useful because you can't expand it out. But the one feature to take note of is this medium-sized lake. This is extremely important, as this is how you will conduct trading. You have to build off of that lake a trading dock building it on these smaller lakes won't work and if for example there was a, a large lake up there sorry rivers i should have said a large lake up there connected to the medium river by this smaller river i don't believe the trader would traverse along this me this small river in order to trade with you i think it would just bypass you by just following along its its route through this lake uh through the the larger river it may be possible for the trader to take a shortcut across this lake i'm not sure on that one are those ducks or are they they are deer swimming okay well fair enough i you know i'm not gonna tell you, you can't swim but uh this map doesn't look too bad we've got some nice forest on there and some mountains that we'll be able to mine into and a huge open area up here so plenty of room to expand some more forest up there 
We can plant our own forests. It'll take time for things to grow, though. But, uh, no, actually, I think this is a fairly good starting location. We should be able to get plenty of fishing done along this coast here. Now then, before we actually unpause, there are a few things that I like to uh, set up. There are a few little windows that I like open. First and foremost, the event log. This is probably not as useful as the other windows that I have open, but it is, I find it useful for the odd thing, especially for telling me that uh, when children have grown old enough to, to join the adult workforce. We also have the general statistics about our town. Uh, as we can see, there are 13 people who are out, who don't have a home. You'll get various notifications up there of people who, how many people don't have tools, how many people are starving, that sort of thing. So it's quite useful to have this little screen open, as well as getting other information. The average health of all your citizens, the average happiness, the stocks that you've got, the temperature, which is in Celsius for obvious reasons, because we're not crazy voodoo witchcrafty people who like freaky Fahrenheit numbers. No, 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 no. You can take that rubbish elsewhere, thank you very much. And uh, don't let the door hit you on the way out. No, I'm, I'm joking, of course. You people who can think in Fahrenheit fascinate me, honestly. I'd like to, very much to cut you open and see how you work. Now, we've also got uh, people here. We've got the number of adults, the number of students, and the number of children. We've actually got five children. That's a lot, honestly. Ah, that may cause me a little bit of trouble early on. We've also got the season and the year. Now, one thing to be aware of, we can actually look at our citizens, and we'll see an age there. These two numbers have nothing to do with each other. This confused me greatly the first time I played the game, because uh, within like the, the, the second year, I had someone who was about 19 when the game started, die of old age, at like 70. And I was like, well, hang on a minute. Can this game not count? But uh, I, from what I can tell, the seasons and the, the year that the town has been here is more representative than the ages of the citizens, which are actually hard and, and um, actually have quite a, a lot to do with the, 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 the game, how they, whether they can breed, whether they can work, that sort of thing. I'm not 100% sure on whether as they get older they can't have children. I might be wrong with that but I believe that they stop having children after a certain age, but don't quote me on that one. But all of that said and done, let us get going. Uh, there's one more screen, actually. I'll just open that for there. This is uh, for assigning jobs to your various uh, citizens. So in the beginning, I actually like to immediately chalk up two builders because we're going to want them to be building things. Now, with all that said and done, we actually need to get a few things done. First and foremost, we are going to want to build homes. We've got a little cart here that's currently ca uh, carrying all of the goods that we brought with us, but that uh, is not going to do for very long. We want a proper stockpile and a storage barn, and we want homes so people can stop being homeless for obvious reasons. For that, we are going to need resources. So we come down here into Remove and Destruction Tools. There are four tools here that are useful this one will remove anything in the, in the area that you designate this one will only remove trees only stones only iron we actually want to pretty much gather everything and this will include uh random mushrooms or or any vegetables on the ground we'll also get some stone over there you need stone and wood even for wooden buildings because most buildings have a stone foundation so word to the wise there now where are we actually going to set up initially? I think we're going to set up our initial... Um, yeah, we'll set up our initial stockpile over here. Let's uh, go over to here. Storage, market, and trade. And we want just a basic stockpile. This will store raw resources. So wood, stone, that sort of thing. Whereas the storage barn will store finished goods. So with that all said and done, we can actually start the simulation. Now... <clears throat> I don't find that uh, speed 1 is that useful. I prefer speed 2 or speed 5. It goes up to speed 10, but I find that a little bit fast. So we'll leave this on speed 2 for now. <clears throat> I do apologize. I still have a bit of a, a cough at the moment. But the stockpile requires these trees to be removed before it can actually be used as a stockpile. Now, hopefully some of our citizens will actually go over there and get that done now, because currently they're just leaving the things they chop down or mine on the ground. 
And whilst they're doing that, I'll just cover some more of the stuff that we can find around the map. These smooth grey rocks are actually stone. And let's see if I can find some. These darker coloured, more jagged rocks are actually iron deposits. We've obviously got some game there. There are different types of trees on the map, but I've not really noticed any mechanical difference uh, in how fast they mature from the saplings or um, how much wood you get from them. And also, around forested areas, you'll see things like this. Wild onions, berry bushes, um, herbs. That is extremely important early on because we're probably going to do a lot of our uh, gathering for food by just literally taking from the forest in a, in a rather sustainable way, really. We'll, we'll be hunting and we'll be gathering wild berries and, and various foods. We can also fish as well. I don't believe there's any risk of depleting a resource, like overfishing, but I could be wrong on that. And if anyone does happen to know, please let, let me know in the comments, because uh, I may be about to send this colony towards doom without that knowledge. They are almost finished. As you can see, everything's just been left on the floor at the moment. As soon as this is ready, the ground will change shape and, uh, sorry, change texture, and our laborers will start carting everything off. Currently, our builders are acting like laborers for the sake of their chores because they don't have anything to build, and that's true of most other professions as well. Now, I think... Actually, we're going to get a storage barn up first. How much is this going to take? 48 wood and 16 stone. We should probably have enough wood on the floor for that. So let's go ahead and build the storage barn. As I mentioned, this will store finished goods. And let's just pop it over here. It's kind of out of the way. It's not going to interfere with our building houses or anything. But the triangles, as you can see there, are for... Uh, people visiting the the barn so for example the doors uh that will link to the roads and how people will actually enter the structure it's not really that important because they don't need roads um unlike some games where you have to have a road adjoining to any building you don't need in this but it does speed things up so we're going to build it there um I'm not actually sure if there's any difference between the input and output arrows because some are pointing into it some are pointing out that could just be that uh it's such a, an uncommon uh, thing that for a building to have two that they just didn't make more graphics for that. But we'll just place it for there. Now, what will happen is if we look over that, it's got to remove a couple of trees. But all these building resources, building will not begin until all of the resources are there. This is a little bit different from some games where they can start work as long as some of the resources are there. And, and just as more trickle in, more work will be done. In this, they won't even begin to construct the building until everything has been brought to the construction site. Now, that has some sort of some ramifications in regards to whether you designate a lot of things to be built at once or just one at a time and wait for it to be finished before moving on to the next. Because if you designate like four or five houses, like I, which I kind of need to do, but I'm going to wait for this first because if I did, then my laborers could take some wood to all of them and then some stone to all of them. And so building work would take a bit longer to actually begin. But on that note, we are going to speed up time just a little bit and have a look at where we might set up our houses. This is quite a large field here, though, so there's loads of room for us. Um, I think maybe if we have our houses up there, we could build a marketplace in amongst them then. Markets are quite useful because they help diversify the diets and improve the efficiency which, with which your populace will actually go out and get um, resources because normally they'll go to the closest storage barn or, or closest storage building for that type of resource and in the case of food if they go to a storage barn that only has fish in it even if your colony has a, a wide array of different foods they'll literally only pick up fish and as a result that's all they'll eat which can affect their health because you want a varied diet now that work has begun there though we can actually go ahead and start pl plotting out our next buildings because uh, it's not going to affect uh, resources being taken over there anymore um, let's start up here let's uh, start a little ways out and we'll start with two buildings to begin with we'll wait for the resources to be taken over there however we, we do need a little bit more wood i feel so whilst that's also happening i'm gonna go ahead and have them chop down the trees around our storage barn now that one's all ready for a builder to go there so i'm actually going to designate a couple more builders 
and hopefully that will uh, get these built a little bit faster. Typically, I like to keep about two builders around and two laborers. Although, as I've mentioned, if they don't have a, a job to do, your specialist tradesmen will actually act in, in, in the role of laborers. That can backfire sometimes because literally if everyone's got something to do then no laborers will be available so no resources will be being moved around etc so it's usually good to have at least two in my opinion also if someone should die who's in a skilled position then the result is that they won't get that role won't automatically be refilled if there are laborers around and say a tailor dies then one of the laborers will become a new tailor but if there are no laborers they won't automatically take from any of the other jobs even if you've got a well a, a a huge amount of people gathering and could afford to lose one it won't automatically do that but as we can see two of our people there they are have moved in so we've got dion my lord dion wow and arabella have moved into that house they will actually start having children now and the way that uh, families work with with Banished is that... Oh, actually, whilst uh, they're doing that, I'm going to queue up some more houses. We'll have another one around here. Now, there are four families, but uh, we do have a lot of children at the moment, so I don't trust that. We'll place another one there, but we'll, we'll see. We may only need four houses, but we might need five. Now, the way that families work is a family comprises of two elders, the, the mother and the father of the family. And as long as they're in the house without any other adults, they'll only share the house with their own family. But as long as there are no other adults there, they will start having children and will continue having children. But if there's no houses for their children to move out to when they become adults, they will effectively uh, reduce mother and father's alone time to nothing. As a result, no more children will happen in that family. Um, you, you don't get a, a case where the son invites his girlfriend over to stay in the family house. No, unfortunately not. They do need their own home to go to. Oh, wait a second. Oh, that's the chimney, perhaps? Or is that the door? Hmm. I believe... Let me just click on this. I think I set that to point the right direction, but I may be wrong. I don't think I have, actually. Ah, damn it. Oh, well, that, that'll just have to stay there now. But uh, this one has got a little snowflake. That means that they are cold, and that is very bad. Or rather, that this house has no uh, firewood in it, because these two houses have already taken the entire stock of firewood that we had. Now, you'll notice that in a house, it, it has an inventory of food and firewood, and that... It's quite useful because people will go back to a house and will then gather the, the, the they'll eat their meals or be warmed by the fire in the house. So as a result, if you have a large family sharing one house, it's actually a little bit more efficient because only one person goes out to fill that house's inventory with uh, food, firewood, clothing, and then a large amount of people can benefit from that. Oh dear, we are out of food. That was is very bad. Okay. On the plus side, no one is requiring and we've got everyone in houses. I was worried that I might have needed five of them, but I really should have been building another uh, a food production area. We'll get a fishing dock going straight away then. And that's only going to take 30 wood and 16 stone. We do not have enough stone though. So, we need to get that stone right now. Let's go ahead and gather all of that. We should be okay for now but it's not going to last us very long they will eventually starve to death so we want that built very very quickly now the next thing that we're going to want to do is firewood so what we can do is have a look here where are you the wood cutter now they will be responsible for turning any of the wood in the stockpile any of the logs into usable firewood for the whole community and we'll build that there now that's going to take Eight stone, that's not too bad. We should be able to get that stone together fairly quickly. Uh, in fact, we'll actually start grabbing this stone over here as well. Like so. There we go. Now, they have collected food, it looks like. There must have been some food still in the car. Okay, well, panic is over then. But our builders will now start work on this. But I am going to reduce our builders a little bit because I don't think we need that much anymore. Now, the next type of building that I generally like to build is a gatherer. Now a gatherer needs forest. So does the um, apothecary 
or rather the herbalist, and the hunting cabin. They all need a wood, though the hunting cabin can make do with an open field. It's either a forest or an open field and it can get some game. Uh, you can build a forester who will plant trees or can basically manage the forest for you. But uh, we've got quite a lot of forest around. Perhaps that one. The yellow area is the working zone that th this building will use. Actually, that looks pretty good. We're going to build a gatherer's hut there. We have pretty much exactly what we need. Now, this uh, icon above the hut there, the, the fishing dock, means that there is no work assigned. We've got seven laborers, so we're going to go ahead and assign actually all of them to fishing. So... They should keep that going, and we want one for the woodcutter as well. Now, the woodcutter will gather logs from the stockpile and immediately turn it into usable firewood, so hopefully this place will be okay then. Where have you gone? They should have room. Why have you got a question mark above your head? Oh, it's because the woodcutter isn't finished yet. No, I was wondering why I didn't have a question mark there. Uh, silly me. Right, whilst they're doing that, as we're going to start going through our wood stocks fairly quickly now we've got a woodcutter we best uh, chop down some more trees as well but as soon as this building is built i will take some of the workers off the the fishing dock and move them onto the gatherer so that we've got a bit more of a varied diet for our townspeople now whilst we're waiting let's check this out you've got one child in there that's fine one child there okay so you well i'm not sure she's 11 so diona is able to work but I don't think she's considered an adult yet. I could be wrong about that. Uh, let's see. It's some notifications. Diona has become an adult. Oh, okay, then well, 11 is, or 10 maybe is an adult. That does change a little bit. My lord, you've been busy. Well done, you guys. But uh, that does change a little bit if you've got a school. What will happen if you've not got a school? Any child that comes of age and is able to work will become an uneducated worker and as a result won't be as efficient but will at least uh, get to work immediately. However, if you've got a school, they will remain as a child for a little longer or rather they'll become a student for a few more years and then they'll enter the workforce as an educated worker and that will increase their efficiency in whatever job they take on. Now this one needs... A bit more wood and a bit more stone, and we are lacking on wood quite badly. So let's get some more. Oh, actually, no, we've got plenty over there. Please hurry up and start chopping down these trees, people. Let's see. They're moving probably coats and fish from this cart. That's good. However, no, we've got some fish in there. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and designate this cart to be pulled down. Just so that all of the stuff in there is moved over to our storage barn. And then uh, we'll free this area up for continued development. But that is it, I think. It is late autumn, probably coming into winter now. But I'm going to be wrapping this episode up there. I do hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. And uh, whilst I'm signing off, I'm going to give these guys roads because it helps them. It makes them walk a little bit faster. Okay, well, it helps me more than them, really. But uh, what's good for the colony is good for them. That's the way I look at it. Let's see, we'll pop one over there. But yes, I do hope you've enjoyed this episode so far. I'm hoping that this uh, series won't fail miserably straight away. That is, this town won't immediately die. If it does, I'll just start another one. But uh, we seem to have a fairly good area right now. And uh, it's certainly better than most of the maps that I've started on. So I'm, I'm hoping that this little town will actually manage to survive for quite some time. Especially once we've got a bit of a better diet for our people. But that really is it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you will be joining me in the next. But until then, from myself and everyone at the town of Harlech, do take care.